the, col the towers to collapse the way we saw them collapse basically implies that the columns simply collapsed into themselves. They telescoped straight down. Uh, steel keeps a lot of its structural integrity, uh, even, even when heated, until you begin to approach the melting point, you, you don't really see a catastrophic loss of strength. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about basically vertical box columns collapsing into themselves, which implies a complete loss of mechanical strength. The top section pushing on the bottom section, it's going to meet equal forces as it goes. Both sections are going to be uh, demolished at the same rate. So by the time you've crushed up 15 stories below it, the top 15 stories are also going to be crushed. And so there's nothing left now to crush the rest of the building. Something of this kind is what we should have seen when the top section of the towers collapsed onto the lower one. The upper and lower sections should have mutually destroyed each other until all the energy is dissipated and the system comes to a rest. Alternatively, as shown in this experiment with two towers made of snow, the top section could have fallen off to the side after the initial collapse. What could not have happened is this. A little tiny chunk of the building can't possibly fall and crush the entire structure below it. This is such a simple, fundamental concept that architects and engineers were astonished in seeing it totally ignored by NIST. This is high school physics and our whole society is being led to believe that these fundamental laws of physics, hard science, don't apply anymore. But even if we assume that the top section of the tower had enough potential energy to destroy the rest of the structure below, it could not have done so at the speed it did, which was near freefall speed. Assuming that the top section on the left contains enough potential energy to destroy the rest of the tower, and assuming we dropped both upper sections at the same time, which one would hit the ground first? It would be the second, of course. As it finds no obstacles in its path, the section on the right would quickly accelerate to free fall speed and maintain it all the way to the ground. The section on the left, instead, needs to use some of its energy to destroy the structure below, so it could never achieve free fall speed. In the case of the Twin Towers, however, both upper sections fell with an acceleration close to free fall speed, as if their path had been practically free from obstacles. It took each tower between 10 and 12 seconds to collapse to the ground, while an absolute free fall time would have been 9.2 seconds. In other words, both upper sections of the towers found enough energy to destroy 80,000 tons of healthy structure below, while accelerating to near free fall speed. This is, as we have said, absolutely impossible by gravity alone. The law of momentum conservation won't allow it. A building cannot do free fall with a huge structural steel structural system in place to support it. Uh, the Twin Towers could, could not have come straight down through the resistance of 80,000 tons of structural steel at the speed of a practically free fall. That just would not happen. If in fact it actually hit and made an impact, it was effectively crushing anything, pushing hard on this core structure below it, the core structure is going to push back equally hard. And that's what's going to cause the top section of the building to slow down. As energy is drained away from the system to deform those members, it would slow down the descending mass and cause a descent at less than free fall speed. There is only one way for those buildings to have collapsed at the speed they did. The buildings fall at a speed uh, which can only occur if the structure has been removed, the vertical structure. The same Shyam Sunder from NIST has acknowledged that free fall can only be achieved with the absence of a structure below. Free fall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. But what could have removed the supporting structure below, since the falling section didn't have any extra energy to do so? The fact that it's coming down at free fall says all of the energy is being used to just make it go straight down, which means it's coming down through itself and not breaking up the building as it goes. Something else has to be clearing the way. The near free fall speed of about 10 seconds has been confirmed by different official sources. The 9-11 Commission wrote that the South Tower collapsed in 10 seconds. Mr. Sunder from NIST has confirmed similar timings. The measurements have indicated 
that Tower 1 collapsed in about 11 seconds and Tower 2 collapsed in about 9 seconds. Mr. Sunder has also acknowledged that the towers came down practically at free fall speed. As a result, the entire top of the building came down pretty much in free fall. The same admission is present in the official report. Since the stories below the level of collapse initiation provided little resistance, the building section above came down essentially in free fall. At this point, we can pose the following question. Given that the building section above came down essentially in free fall, given that for free fall to occur, no supporting structure must be present, and given that the falling sections didn't have any extra energy to destroy the structure below, can you suggest anything different from some kind of controlled demolition for the removal of the supporting structure, which was necessary for near free fall speed to be achieved?